uh, welcome to BC Chemistry Plus, and I am going to talk about the chapter polymer today because the uh, I guess you do understand that the NEET is uh, around the corner, and uh, we don't really have much time left anymore. But these small chapters are actually what the ones which are going to help you to build some score in NEET, and definitely, guys, you are going to get um, at least one question coming from this chapter. Before I get started, I'm going to tell you a few things. First of all, whenever I'll be writing something, I'll be looking at that site because I have another screen in there. Sometimes I'll be looking down below because I have the recording going on in there. So I, um, I can just check sometimes whether everything is going fine or not. All right. So the thing is, I'll be making some small, small videos together and then combining them. So you would be like four to five videos at max. Each videos would be of 15 minutes span. So that is how we are going to record this entire thing. Now, um, the first thing that we need to start with is the polymer chapters. And guys, as it suggests you, it is when we are um, trying to understand how the polymer is being formed, you do understand that by mixing the monomers together. Monomers are nothing but like the bricks, like the way we uh, build a house with the brick. Similarly, guys, um, here also the same thing is going to happen. So monomer is the brick of the building block of the polymers and definitely guys polymers are the macromolecules when you mix the bricks together you get the polymers our simple example is polythene that we use every single day uh, to carry the carry bags that the polythene that's the ethylene is the monomer and the polythene is the polymer of that now guys uh, in this video what we are going to focus on completely is uh, how the polymers are being actually you know um, they are uh, classified actually so the first thing that we are going to go for with respect to the source on the basis of the source how are they classified so as you can see the first kind of classification comes as the natural polymer then we have synthetic polymer then we have semi-synthetic polymer natural polymer means like it suggests it is coming from the nature there are two types of polymers like that one is biodegradable another one is bio non-degradable or non-biodegradable biodegradable polymers like cellulose you have uh, glycosin, you can see that in the board, uh, you can see that starch is also there, cellulose is there, then you have protein, right? And then you have glycosin. So all these are the polymers. You know, the protein is nothing but the polymer of amino acid, isn't it? So um, this is something which is found in plants and the animals, all right? So now um, that, uh, that was the biodegradable. Non-biodegradable are like uh, the resins and the rubber, so guys, these are the non-biodegradable means they do not really get degraded in the nature. So these are the actually uh, the natural polymers. And now we are going to talk about the synthetic polymer, which although it is the third point, but I would teach you this first because the synthetic polymers are actually the one which we are making in the lab completely. Now, uh, what are the polythene? You know that, like I said in the beginning, the ethylene molecule, when we are combining them together, we are actually getting the polythene molecule from there, right? So polymer of ethylene. Then we have buna S and buna N. They are made up of um, like 1,3-butadiene, acrylonitrile, and styrene. I'm going to talk about them in details. How are they formed, the structure, everything is there in the syllabus. So I'm going to talk about that. Then we have nylon 6,6. All right. So these are the total uh, like the synthetic polymers, which are completely made in the lab. How are they done? I'm going to talk about that. Now, coming to the last one, which is the semi-synthetic means some things from nature. Nature, I'm taking it. And then, guys, what are we doing? Then we are, uh, we can say, enhancing or we are modifying the natural polymer into something better. Like, let's say, uh, vulcanized rubber. Rubber is something which is a non-biodegradable natural polymer what we do is we do vulcanization this is also there in your syllabus guys what is vulcanization i'm going to talk about that it's like you increase the durability you increase the tensile strength of the substance means rubber is a small uh, it's a very soft substance but we also use rubber in our you know uh, in the tires right so that means that they there's really very really hard isn't it so how is this transformation happening that's called vulcanization by mixing sulfur, we are actually increasing the strength, tensile strength or durability, or uh, you can say the strength overall of the rubber substances. Then we have cellulose and acetate cellulose nitrate. You can understand cellulose is the biodegradable natural polymer. Then acetate and nitrate, we are mixing it, right? So uh, how much are these classifications needed? Guys, right now, you are simply mugging this up, isn't it? 
when we be doing them their structure when we are forming them making the polymerization at that time you'll be able to get this really very well for the time being you just keep noting all these things up all right you do not have to read anything beyond whatever i'm teaching you all right this is entire ncrt is being covered and a little bit more than ncrt as well now with respect to structure guys the first thing is the linear polymer as you can understand when the monomers are being combined together in a linear fashion that's called linear polymer like the name suggests you have high density polymer for that uh, definitely guys we are going to um, know the structures of them as well similarly we have polyvinyl chloride as well so it's a polymer of vinyl chloride when all the vinyl chloride molecules are combined together in a linear fashion that is when we get the uh, polyvinyl chloride molecule then we have the branch polymer branch polymers are actually the low density polymers like branch means you do understand right like the iupac nomenclature you have seen what is branching right in organic chemistry it's the exact same kind of branching okay then we have cross linked polymer so here in cross linked polymer i would be showing you uh, what actually happens is like the polymers are being formed by adding the monomer in the uh, you know in the branches like in the para position or in the ortho position they are adding up okay so i'll be showing you the bakelite melamine urea formaldehyde these are the examples of that urea formaldehyde these are the examples of that okay cross link polymer um now uh, with respect to the mode of polymerization this is also very important guys um see how are we polymerizing it means uh, if you just see the first example is homo polymer and the other one is co polymer homo polymer means when similar uh, again guys always remember the name suggests this all homo polymer means when similar atoms are combined together that is called homo polymer right let's say example is polythene so if you think about polythene right now here polythene so it is nothing but the ethylene molecule when you are mixing like n number of ethylene molecule when they are polymerized there okay so we use uh, some catalyst over here wilkinson's catalyst so what actually happens is we get the polymerized structure of ethylene here which is like this so you can understand ethylene molecule is the only molecule which is adding up in a linear way to give you the polythene so polythene is what it's a definitely homo polymer it's also a linear polymer as well guys chain polymer as well right polystyrene it's a polymer of styrene molecule styrene is benzene with the ethylene molecule this is styrene all right so when we make the polymer of this that is polystyrene then pvc vinyl chloride polymer so only vinyl chloride is the only molecule which is getting multiplied there then pan pa, pa, peroxyacetyl acrylonitrile so acrylonitrile is the monomer that is getting added up to make the uh polyacrylonitrile sorry so that uh, is making the polymer in there so teflon tetra polytetrafluoroethylene then synthetic rubber isoprene molecule natural rubber neoprene molecule they are getting combined together now we will be coming we will be talking about the copolymer so you can understand the different molecules are actually being combined together so uh, like the way coed school so you have heard about the coed school right coed school means where boys and girls both of them are um in there right they can study so similarly copolymers means when two molecules are of monomers are mixing together and that is making the polymeric chain example is buna s 13 butadiene and styrene these two molecules are mixing together to give you the monomer now that monomer is actually getting combined together to give you polymer okay so the monomer is a mixture of two different different substances two different different molecules so that is what the buna s is buna n is when you have 13 butadiene same thing with acrylonitrile okay so this is buna n and buna s so these are copolymers so there are plenty of examples like that uh, urea formaldehyde is also a copolymer you can understand by the name urea and formaldehyde together they are making the monomer right then it is getting Uh, added up to make the over polymer chain, right? So this was the thing. Now coming to the uh, next one, which is condensation polymer. So it is based on the growth. Okay, as you can see, on the basis of that also you have homo polymer and co polymer. So when we are talking about 
the additional polymer it is with respect to the chain growth chain growth means how the chain is moving but when we are talking about the condensation polymer it is step growth means from bottom to top how is it how are them that is what condensation polymer so condensation like this chain growth means like this horizontal and vertical okay homo polymers are nylon 6 okay so nylon 6 is actually a mixture of caprolactam molecules so when e caprolactam molecules are actually mixed together one uh, like only one type of molecule is being used that is e caprolactam when that is being mixed together you get a nylon 6 okay then uh, copolymer what are the copolymer of the stepwise growth thing nylon 66 terylene which is also known as dicrol let me show you right now just take a note of it okay in the second video when i would be showing you all the structures that uh, at that time it would be much more easier for you to understand okay so glyptol bakelite melamine these are the ones which is actually the copolymers of this level okay so guys this was the classification with respect to the growth the last type of classification is with respect to the forces this is super duper important for us okay with respect to intermolecular forces first is elastomers what are the elastomers guys um, these are first i will be showing you the strength of the different different intermolecular forces first write this down this is the most important thing guys uh, you can see first is the thermo settings polymer then fibers then plast uh, thermoplastic polymer then the elastomers so elastomers are the weakest weakest so what are the elastomers means where the intermolecular forces are very very weak what are the examples of that natural rubber i told you right rubber is not really a strong molecule we vulcanize it to make it strong right so natural rubber is a elastomer but then again guys if any few vulcanized it um, after that as well we cannot really increase the intermolecular strength that much i'll be showing you we are actually adding two chains together we are condensing it actually okay so even the vulcanized rubber also comes under the elastomer section then we have buna n and buna s we just talked about that then we have neoprene uh, which is actually guys uh, like i said natural rubber is nothing but a mixture of isoprene unit uh, so neoprene which is a synthetic rubber so all kinds of rubber are actually elastomers all right fibers so fibers are the second uh, strongest element so here i have polyamide polyester guys the things that we are using to uh, make our you know clothes right then we have thermoplastic polymers which is the third powerful so polystyrene pvc polythene and the thermo settings the strongest ones bakelite melamine urea polymer it's been so many times we have seen these three people together isn't it in copolymer we have seen them together then in the um, you know uh, artificial polymer also we have seen them together now we are seeing them in the thermo settings they are super important guys i'm going to show you when i'd be talking about this things uh, how to form them their structures are also very very important for us okay bakelite melamine and urea formaldehyde okay so this was about the classification so far okay in the next video guys we will be talking about the mechanism and on the basis of mechanism we would be drawing all those polymers in here you can see that it looks like a really big list guys guys but it is going to not going to take much time for us to cover up all right and then see the chapter is not really big we can just complete it right here so guys stay with me and just watch the next video the links would be in the description so just and and the first pinned comment as well all right